Hello viewers, Super GT here. Finally, I've returned to Gran Turismo Sport. It's been about two weeks since my previous video. But finally, we are ready. We are reinvigorated to go once again. So this weekend, we've got the Nürburgring 24 hour race and also the World Tour, the Gran Turismo World Tour event is being held here at the Nürburgring. And we have Daily Race C at the Nürburgring as well, which is what we are looking at right now. And we're going to see what we can do uh, with a grid slot of 10th, pretty much dead centre of the grid. And we're going to see how many positions we can gain from here. Going into the back of the Toyota, luckily the Aston Martin as well, not too much affected by that. The Porsche just opening the door through turn two against the Supra. It's going to be a, a, a run down towards the next chicane between myself and the Finn in the Supra. We get ahead as we go into the left hander ahead. You can see there the order as we settle down into our positions. So a lot of Supras here. The Supra uh, was the fastest car in the qualifying. Although I must be said that the top 10 had four or five different cars, which is actually good to see. And since the update, the recent uh, physics update, I think uh, uh, people are tending to choose a bigger range of cars, which is good. So at this point, uh, one position gained up into ninth, but we can try to gain a couple more, uh, hopefully on the GP circuit, as it is by far the easiest place to go for a pass. As the Dane forces the Nissan GTR very wide, and he's just going to come back on the track, and we're just going to sweep around the outside and avoid contact, go up another position. So the driver ahead, the Porsche, getting the five second penalty, the dreaded five second penalty, although that was absolutely fair. It's kind of a move that was never really going to work. He kind of prized the door open. Uh, got the position, but he's got the penalty. So two penalty zones at this track, the first of which is after about turn six on the GP circuit. The next one is on the very long straight at the end of the lap. So we're not going to be able to go past this guy uh, because of the penalty, not until the end of the lap at least. So ideally you need to try to find a way past before that, but it is very difficult. Around here, uh, the track is very, very narrow. It's not an easy place to go for a move at all. Unless of course you just shove them wide. You could always just do that. But you can see it just bottling up now uh, behind the two Aston Martins for fifth place. The top four begin to pull away. Top three are all driving the Toyota Supra, which seems to be the best uh, choice for this race. It is a fuel saving race. You do need to save fuel. Um, you can, of course, pit at the end of the first lap, but um, it is quite a long pit lane here. And typically it is way quicker just to save fuel. Drive a little bit smoothly to preserve your tires as well. Um, and just try to go for the no stop. So the Aston Martin getting alongside the um, the Porsche there and he, he's off into the barrier. The Aston Martin there as well, flying off. So I'm not sure exactly how that one panned out. I think the Porsche might have tried to go around the outside through that far sweeping left. Never a great place to go for a move. But the Aston Martin ahead gets a two second penalty. And now we've moved up into our favorite position of sixth place. But you can see as we pan behind there, you can see just how close it is. So we can't really Rest on our laurels just yet. It's always going to be a hard race around here. Even if you can mostly defend your position through the Nordschleife loop, you can quite easily keep your position if you just don't make too many big mistakes. But um, the pressure is always going to be on. And the main thing I think around here is you're just going to really have to try to shake off the car behind before you get to the back straight. The back straight obviously is a very good overtaking opportunity. If someone's in your slipstream, there's a very good chance they're going to come flying past and there's not much you can do about it unless uh, you do have a much quicker car in a straight line but behind me at the moment the Toyota Supra that does have very good straight line speed the Mercedes here not too bad so I do need to ideally get out of the magical 0.8 second slipstream uh, suck zone from the car behind at the moment though um, kind of bottled up behind the Aston Martin and as we've spoken about many times it's very difficult to overtake around here so just trying to push for that mistake try and pressure him into doing something silly and maybe we could take advantage of that so 
coming up towards about halfway into the lap. In fact, we probably know we're already halfway into the lap when you add in the GP loop as well. So the lap times around here, you're looking normally around 8 minutes 10 to 8 minutes 20 for a solid lap. But on a proper qualifying lap, you're looking at 8.05s, 8.06s. And so the qualifying has changed now, I think, since the physics update because we used to be getting below 8 minutes. As I, I do recall some people getting like 7.57s, 7.56s. And so we're now about 10 seconds slower over the entirety of this lap since the physics update whatever that has changed so now the group beginning to tighten up you see the Toyota just behind again really close to my tail but um, not really any way for him to go past I'm just going to half cover it off just position your car in the middle of the track there's not really much they can do unless they just really slam you off into the shadow realm but he's deciding to not do that thankfully breaking just on the shadow for this last tree going into the carousel nice and tidy keep it on the bank stuff and away we go just in just exiting the carousel on the tip of the lighter colored tarmac and we are away into the best portion of the circuit in my humble opinion now this this section here really flows very nicely lots of fast sweeping corners which really just really go well uh, together so I really do enjoy this this section of the circuit and, but, and again, it's not a very good place for overtaking. Uh, almost no braking zones, not many braking zones at all. And into fast corners, it not, not normally is a good combination for trying to go past people. But again, just trying to push for that mistake. Can, can we push him, uh, push him, not literally, but uh, mentally push him into an error? Maybe just run wide somewhere, leave me a little bit of an opening. If not, we just have to wait maybe another minute or so, and then we'll get to that back straight which will give me the opportunity to go past. In fact, I will easily go past, as long as I'm this close, as long as I'm close enough. Now, the big problem for anyone with the penalty, of course, is that the penalty zone coming up on the straight is, well, is at the beginning of a straight. So you lose out for the entirety of the straight. You do lose a lot of time. So he's got a two second penalty there. He's probably gonna lose about five seconds as a result of that. So it really does pay to not get a penalty or get it in a different zone and then um, then you can uh, serve your penalty on the GP track where I don't think you lose quite as much time because the penalty zone on the GP track is um, it's at the beginning of a straight but not as long a straight so you don't have quite the same time loss. So the beautiful D2 livery here, this is the car I used for the 50 laps of Nürburgring launch life which I did about two months ago. So I'm very familiar with this car, with this track uh, in the same combination. So here we go then, here is the penalty zone as we just come under this Audi Sport banner just after that. It's gonna pull over to the right hand side and we're gonna go through to take fifth place and you see the, the cars behind, still very close in attendance. So the, the, the gap ahead is quite big, um, maybe four or five seconds as you can see there as you look uh, up the road. But just behind we've got the Nissan GTR, which is recovering. Actually he started, I think top four, maybe third. So he's actually, definitely got the pace he's a very quick driver with a high lap time or with a good lap time so I'm going to have to look out for him we might well just turn into a very defensive race in terms of my qualifying I only did one proper flying lap and it managed to be I managed to get an 814 but I think I could get that down to an 810 with uh, maybe five or six more lap practice so coming over the uh, finish line at the end of lap number one, halfway into the race, 52% fuel remaining. So we're on course to be able to get to the end quite easily. So use only 48% on that lap, another 52 remaining to get us through to the end. So the main thing we we're doing there really just short shifting slightly. I didn't really go into a leaner fuel map, but you can do that, especially if you're in the slipstream. I'm not in the slipstream now, so it's probably not worth doing. But again, you can save fuel through the Norge Life loop if you really have to, you can keep cars behind um, on a leaner setting, as long as you don't make any massive glaring errors. So there was the second penalty zone, or the first one actually, and the, the other one's the second one on the, on the lap. Down into the hairpin at the bottom of the hill, and then powering out back up the hill again towards the Schumacher S, and making the, making the most of all the kerb on the entry to get a better better angle through, through the turn. And at this point here, 
Tiger Sim Racing in that Nissan GTR, looking to come back through the field after having a poor opening half a lap, dropping down from the top four, I think down to seven or eight for one point, but now, now, now fighting back through the pack if possible. And you can see him just there, running a little bit wide on the exit of that chicane onto this back straight. As we come up towards the chicane, he's got a very good uh, straight line speed in that Nissan GTR. And I'm gonna go defensive, because absolutely do not want to let him go past into this chicane. Much prefer that chicane. It's actually a harder uh, overtaking opportunity compared to the other chicane. But we're going to cover him off regardless and make sure he stays behind. Especially going onto this loop now. This is far harder to overtake once we're here. So coming down the hill into this fast sweeping downhill right hander. Quite a tricky one to get right but very rewarding when you do get it right. And you see just how close he is. Behind him though the gap is opening up. But the pressure is most certainly on this Nissan GTR, the big boy that it is, right on my tail. But the thing is, you must kind of be aware of his presence, but just try to really focus on all of your lines, just get everything right. And uh, the frustration will begin to transfer back to the, uh, the driver behind as they realize they can't get past. Just trying to break that slipstream as much as possible. He's alive to it though, he's gonna move over and take as much slipstream as possible. So he can save fuel by doing that and uh, I'm not really in a position to down six and a half seconds away from the guy in fourth. Now coming down the back straight here, he's just gonna uh, pull out the slipstream with the great engine speed that that Nissan GTR has. He's gonna go flying past around the outside. It's a good move and it's not really, there's not really much I could have done about it other than swerve across and zigzag like an absolute maniac. But um, that's kind of against the rules, so we don't do that. Dropping down into sixth place, I just need to stick within that slipstream. Already though, he's uh, edged out seven tenths of a second as we come down the hill uh, towards this fast, daring left-hander at the top of the hill. Right, uh, quite a difficult corner that one. Lots of mistake, um, lots of mistakes get made there because it's a very nasty bump as, as you just go over the top, and really throw your car off course. But we get it done okay. Now he's already nine tenths ahead out of the slipstream range, or actually eight tenths ahead now. Um, so just beginning to pull, pull clear is this Tiger Sim Racing. As we said though, this is something you've got to be aware of because he started, um, as I said, third or fourth, I can't quite remember, but he started quite near the front. So obviously he's got the speed. So when a driver who starts near the front gets pushed down a little bit, you've got to be wary of them because you just know that they've, they, you know, they've got the speed, they know what they're doing, they're just having a bit of a bad race to begin with at least. And then they're just going to try to fight back through the pack a little bit later. And that seemed to be the case there. I was going to I think I could have defended for the entire lap, it's just that that car had really good straight line speed and it was always going to be really hard to keep him at bay for the entirety of the lap, especially with that really long back straight. And this NGTR really performing well in a straight line and there's not much you can do to combat that really except for just build the gap before you get to any straight. I wasn't quite able to do it on this occasion and it's always hard, you know, when a, when a fast driver is in your slipstream They've got the benefit of the slipstream. It's, it's, it's very difficult to try to really hold them back. So we're going to fast forward this little section here, and you can see again the driver head. He's just edging out a couple of seconds now. I just don't quite have that pace that he has. He's definitely a little bit faster. I'm going to go on board with the driver behind. So this is the driver in the Mercedes as well, and this guy started behind me on the grid. So we both started tenth. We started tenth and eleventh. We're now sitting sixth and seventh, and I think this is actually something. Um, we could do more often. This is actually quite an interesting way to analyse the way that I drive or the way that you drive by watching yourself from someone else's view. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna pan across between the two of us here. We're gonna watch from this guy's perspective as he's trying to uh, hunt me down uh, towards the end of the race here. So about a quarter of the race left to go as we yeah we're halfway pretty much more, or more than halfway through the second lap of two. And this guy is just trying to just trying to hunt me down. He does have a penalty, but um, it's still very interesting to see uh, the differing lines and the differing speed. As I go a little bit wide there, don't really meet the apex at all. And this guy seems to be a little bit more smooth. Uh, perhaps he's preserved his tyres a little bit better. And I do apologise that I haven't brought up the telemetry data for this reaper, but you can see the that we can focus on the, the lines that we're taking and the speed that we're carrying through the corners. It said he goes a little bit earlier into there. I think that's a much better line actually. And he has begun just to um, get into the slip, uh, slipstream range, I do believe, as we go down this dip. Quite a difficult corner of that. 
and then a fast sweeping double right and then over this left hand over the, over the br uh, brow of that hill and then coming down towards this fast daring section you can take that flat out but you have to pretty much carry it right onto the limits of the track and he has definitely caught up since the carousel he's gained maybe a second a second and a half and he just seems to be chipping away a tenth or two every corner or most corners just gaining a tiny little bit amount more than I'm getting away from him through the mini carousel you see just how close he is now so I'm lucky here that he, this guy has a penalty which is about to be served because if not he would have been in the slipstream range and most likely would have gone past um, on, on this back straight so pan back to myself you see that as we just look behind he does have that penalty as we cross that line he's going to slow down and you can see actually the difference this kind of shows you the difference between having a penalty and not having a penalty that wasn't a big penalty I think it was 0.5 or 1 second and he was probably about half a second behind but he's already you see just how much he dropped back it just it just really murders you having a penalty at the beginning of a straight and a straight that's that long it really it hurts physically hurts so he's actually dropped down to more than three seconds now you just lose time with the entirety of the straight and the gap actually up to four seconds it shows, just shows you how much time you lose but ultimately we have come through to finish in sixth place and to be fair i think that was a good performance it was a good race starting 10th just making the most of all the mistakes and the penalties of the other drivers and just keeping it keeping it nice and clean and often around the Nürburgring Nordschleife that's that's all you need you don't you, you don't need to push too much let the others do the pushing let them make the mistakes get the penalties and normally you'll gain positions if you do that so ultimately 10th to 6th four positions gained 20 seconds off the leader the leader's really quick there in the super even second and third were a good 7 8 seconds away from the leader but um I think the AMG is a solid choice around this race. But there we go. Thank you so much for watching as always. Let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing. And if you did enjoy, hit the like button. I'll see you next time, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.